Hello. Thank you for watching the show. You're watching Rejoice with Pastor Chuck. You could be watching any show in the world, but you're watching us, and we're so very, very thankful. Thank you for watching the show tonight. Um, as always, uh, we have a very special guest tonight, uh, a, a guest that is in tune to not just what happens at this station, but she's in tune to what happens around the globe. Very articulate lady, very technical lady, very sharp lady. Uh, and I'm so very, very grateful to have her on the show tonight. Uh, she works here at TVSB, the greatest station in the world. I don't care. You, you could do uh, <laughs> Fox, T, uh, what's, what's the other? C uh, CNN, NNC, the BBC. I don't care which, any, you can have any C, but we have the best, the best working here at TVSB in Santa Barbara. How, how are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, this? great. I, Thank you for having me. I have one question for you. Yes. This is a question that has been rocking the world for, for many years. We tried to get to the bottom of it. We've got all kind of stuff going on around the nation. They're talking about stuff around the world. They're trying to make things happen. So it's just settle the argument. What, what works best for you? What, what, what will settle the um, hot or mild sauce on your barbecue? <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me, it's going to be mild. Mild? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you weren't waiting. You thought I was going to... So, <laughs> normally, we open the show, I, I ask about... We start talking about music, but I, I, I tried to catch her off guard. Um, you've been at this station for, for uh, a week? This coming April will be three years. Three years? Yeah. Putting up with guys like me. <laughs> I'm blessed. To and, and, and what do you actually do here, here at the station? Well, uh, I work as a part-time, um, as a programmer, mm -hmm. uh, put the shows on TV, our two stations, mm -hmm. uh, 17 and 71. Mm -hmm. And we broadcast 24 hours, seven days a, a week. So this is a lot uh, to program. Mm -hmm. um, and I coordinate with the producers and provide information. And um, if anything else is needed, I would help sometimes uh, with uh, the production of the shows, a few shows, if they need an extra hand. So, so help me understand this. So, so this is a TVSB, yes. City of Santa Barbara, South, uh, uh, California. You, you program 24 hours a day the shows, yes. each and every show that yes. comes on throughout the year. Is there any special show, other than my show, is there any special show? <laughs> <laughs> so, because you're, you're a very wise lady, and so uh, you've also been doing some work for yourself. Yes. The, the wisdom. <laughs> of our city. I know. That's amazing to me because you. You, you had something in, inside of you that said, I like what I do here at the station, but you had the something that made, that made you look outside and say, hey, I see stuff going on that, that's really helpful. Share with us. Sure, sure. And to answer... Your first question. I, know, I, know. I, I got so much stuff. <laughs> first, yeah. um, I uh, do my best to be fair to our producers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even though I love you so much, you're my dear friend, you enjoy it, but I still would uh, do with your show exactly mm -hmm. like I do with the other shows, yeah, yeah. other producers' yeah. uh, products that yeah. we have. You are a dear member to us, to TVSB, mm -hmm. and we treat all our members fairly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't uh, get special <laughs> privilege. I don't get the, I don't get the executive <laughs> VIP stamp. Sorry. <laughs> Outside the studio, yes, you're super special. <laughs> Thank you. But you stroke my ego. <laughs> Make me feel good. Right? Yes, and uh, even for my show, I. Um, 
I would be fair, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, treat myself less fair yeah. than yeah. what I uh, do for other our other producers. Um, and the second question on how this happened. Uh, mm -hmm. It was by chance. Uh, I was doing a one-time project, like one video, about my dear friend Eileen, who then mm -hmm. was 95 years old. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something mm -hmm. to, you know, have so that we remember her one day when she's mm -hmm. no longer with us, hopefully many, many years right. from right. now. Right. And uh, she amazes me, inspires me, and everyone, I think. I, I, I thought I met her. Yes. we need to share this yeah. story. At 95, mm -hmm. she drives by herself, uh, herself and uh, she wears high heels, Mercy. goes every week to uh, the Santa Barbara Women's Club, mm -hmm. where she's been a member for years more, I guess, than 35 years, mm -hmm. and she was a president at a certain mm -hmm. stage. So I thought, okay, let's do this. And when we were editing the show and the team here were helping me, I we were thinking of a title for the show. And I said, ah, wisdom of our city. Because we learned so much wisdom from yeah. her. Yeah. And Mark, our Mark Melson said, Mark. ah, yeah. Yeah. yes, yeah. big He's Mark. He's a nice guy. Hi, Mark. <laughs> he said, wow, I, I like that title. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we use it. And then I thought, Wow, I mean, we live in Santa Barbara where the majority of population mm -hmm. is senior people. Yeah. My age and above. Yes. Yes. And therefore, I'm only 21, you guys don't know. It's a wealth of wisdom yeah. that we have here. Yeah. So why don't we track other stories, yeah. other lessons learned that we all can learn from, whether younger generation, middle ages, or even older and senior uh, yeah. people can yeah. learn from. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is how, how the show was created. That's amazing. And, and, and so that vision of, of pulling out the wisdom of that generation, is that just something that just fell on you or just you just had to just share or just something you had to share your story and you realize you were at that age or because I'm at that age I think and I try to share my story more because I know it's going to help some younger person who hasn't crossed that valley yet and I think that's to me that's what we do here at TBSB we present a side of the the other side of the valley yes yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you know, part um, of the reason why I I thought of having such a show, mm -hmm. I think, uh, because I was uh, raised by uh, senior parents. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, my uh, eldest sister, uh, you know, is the same age as you know a mother to me. That could be her uh, uh, eldest son is just two years younger than me. Mm. So uh, I always um, felt good mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, always um, uh, was like at home when mm. I'm with senior people. And I know how much I've learned through the years, whether from my parents or the uh, older mentors mm -hmm. that I worked with. And I thought, yeah, why, why not share this with, with our community, with let, everyone? Let me see if I can pull this out. And it, it, this is a little off script, but I think this is okay. So yes. it, as long as I've been here, there's been a very few non-males working here. <laughs> so Big Mark, Mike, the spine stage, and uh, JP, and a couple of, of salty grandpa guys that walk you know. So how is it being the own one of the few females working in this type of industry? Is there is that a plus? Is that a minus? Is that is that a, a, a glass ceiling that you have to push through? Or is that something you just like you just make it happen? Uh you just make it happen mm -hmm. and here in the US mm -hmm. it's completely normal. Uh, in fact I haven't noticed this and okay. if there were an issue uh, 
I would have been already ready for this because I had to push the ceiling years and years back growing up in Lebanon yeah. and getting an education as an electrical engineer mm -hmm. and then working uh, at Middle East Airlines, mm -hmm. the Lebanese, East, yeah, the yeah, yeah, Lebanese yeah. Airlines, mm -hmm. uh, Air Liban, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the French name. And uh, I, I was the, the first uh, female engineer at the Lebanese airport who worked in the field. Mm -hmm. There was, I think, another lady engineer, but she did administrative stuff. So to go there, fix equipment, hardware, computer, other stuff uh, at the airport, um, uh, that, you know, I, I was alone then. And it wasn't a big deal then. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I was one of the very, very few. And, and first, first at that time, yes, yes, first yes. Because we're right. not spring chickens. We're not. So this was <laughs> this was this didn't happen just last week. This was a few years ago, um, when a, a technical female was not allowed, sometimes not allowed to be in that venue. Eh? And That's so, right. so you were a. Um, a barrier breaker. You, sure. you, you are a, a, a frontiers person. Yes, uh, yeah. and uh, by the way, that opened the door to many other girls mm -hmm. uh, until this became the norm. It's normal. And right now, uh, for years, mm -hmm. it's been uh, the very first female pilot to fly a commercial airlines in the Middle East wow. is a Lebanese wow. lady who wow. flies uh, Middle East Airlines. Wow. Wow. So she's the uh, the very first uh, female pilot in that whole area. So, so let, me, let me see if I, and, and, and help me right now. Um, this is uh, two, this is 2020, first of the year, give or take, and there's some up, there's some stuff going on in Lebanon right now. Yes. Um, your home country. Um, how, how would you articulate that? Well, I pray for Lebanon, for mm -hmm. the family members I still have there. Mm -hmm. I have two sisters and uh, some of uh, their children mm -hmm. uh, in there. The rest are around the world, mm -hmm. in Canada and Europe, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, in Dubai, and other areas of the Middle East. So I pray and hope that the situation gets better. Uh, there was a kind of revolution over the past couple of months. Um, fortunately, it wasn't a war like when I grew up. Mm -hmm. I grew wow. up in that civil war mm -hmm. that, that happened and ended in 1990. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was really, really tough. It was bombing, killing, um, fighting. Yeah. Uh, uh, First this, hand, you could yes, see it. Boom, boom, yes. boom. Yeah. The, these past two months, uh, there were few things, you know, like um, it's just uh, attacking a few banks or breaking windows, etc. Some people were hurt, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but nothing compared to a war. Mm. And I heard... Um, as of yesterday, I think, um, a new government was elected there, and uh, <laughs> my husband called it the pretty government. And the reason is uh, because uh, there are many female ministers, many mm -hmm. yeah, politicians, yeah. female politicians, most of them um, hold a, a PhD, a doctorate mm -hmm. from Paris or even the American University of Beirut mm -hmm. or others, mm -hmm. and uh, they are now in charge. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the situation mm -hmm. would become better. Mm -hmm. By the way, something um, I mentioned probably earlier on, um, on other shows, but I'm not sure if you're aware of that uh, the Lebanese president uh, has to be uh, Christian by law. Wow. Uh, some people think Lebanon is a, uh, uh, is a Muslim country. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a majority of Muslims in Lebanon, of course, mm -hmm. but the country is uh, a democratic country. The president is being elected and uh, there, there is prime minister mm -hmm. and um, all, uh, the, the, the democratic government. Mm -hmm. But just some, you know, directions as far as, uh, as religion, is that the president has mm. to be Christian? That's very interesting, and I and I would I would I would bet I'm, I'm not a gambling man, 
the only thing I bet on is me. <laughs> I'm, I may bet on you. But that's something I would bet that, that half of our viewers had no idea that that happened. Yeah. I think so, yeah. too. Right? Yes. Right? Okay, yes. so l let me ask you this. Um, if you were running for president <laughs> of, of either Lebanon or America or Fiesta, yes, being El Presidente, either <laughs> one, um, what would you try to project to the people? Just a, a blanket message. What would be your, your blanket message to everyone? Um, I prefer, by the way, the fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's easy, right? <laughs> that is more, most fun of all. <laughs> um, I would project that this is a democracy. Mm. People must be hurt, mm. of course, but uh, there is a limit uh, by the law. There mm. has to be law, law uh, that governs uh, what we can do or cannot do. Uh, we, ca we can have our opinions and everything, but we need to respect others. And if there is a vote and someone is elected, we need to respect that. You respect the, the position, even if you don't respect the person taking that position until someone else is elected and you work on it. So it's uh, democracy, fairness, uh, loyalty to, to that country organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, following uh, the rules not to the letter can be flexible yeah. but yeah. as far as yeah. these rules serve yeah. the country spirit on, of the law and letter of the law yeah, that's big yes, yes and then um, let me see if I can run my brain back because I'm a little slow I'm not I'm not as sharp as I used to be. Um, and so you, you were talking about um, how, how, how all this got started. And, and I hear you, uh, and, and, and when I, every time I see you, I see this, first of all, I see this, this, this beautiful lady. Thank you. Right? And I see this intelligent lady. And I also see this, this person who's really a watcher. And you like, you kind of step back and you watch how things develop. Um, and you talked about the democracy thing. Uh, and one thing I love about democracy is you, you get your say, but you don't get your way. Exactly. Right. Yes. You get your say. Perfectly said. We can always speak. Up. You may not always get your way, but I can at least say, hey, this is how I feel. This is what I think. This is, and I can at least say it. And, and that's what I, you've always been so strong to tell me and we've known each other about two years. You've, you've called me out when I was doing right. You've called me like, eh, Chuck, maybe you should tweak that thing back. You know, and, and, and I think that's what I love most about you is you don't have any, um, any, 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 nothing holds you back from speaking the truth in what you see. You are a shot, I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say a shot caller, but you are a, you are a truth caller. You have called me out on my truth. You've called me, Chuck, what are you really about? And I love that about you. Thank you. I love, that's, to me, that's the most powerful thing about a person. If I may not agree with who you are or what you are, but I will at least say, hey, uh, think about what you're saying. And you've always made me think about what I'm saying. We've been on the show for almost two years now. And every time that I think that I've got cr close, close to the line, like, like really that close, who has, like, ah, come on, Chuck, come on, bring it back in. You have. And so I, I like that under every great ship, there's a rudder. And it, it only has to move a degree or two to make that vessel. And so... How often in this station have you had to use your rudder to turn right. the station? Um, in fact, this has been the way <laughs> since I was little, mm -hmm. probably since I started to talk. <laughs> um, and uh, there are few people who don't like it. 
I've, yeah, you yeah. know, had uh, situations where even relatives were offended, mm. even though my goal was uh, to help them get better, improve. Right. See, but some people don't understand it. And I have other people who at first uh, showed that they were offended or didn't like mm -hmm. it, but then a year or two later came back to me and expressed how grateful they yeah. were because yeah. I said the truth. Yeah. And um, I learned over the years to be uh, more diplomatic. And so that's <laughs> that's tough. That's tough, yes. right? Yeah. I had to learn yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And when and where better yeah, yeah. than uh, during the war. Mm. And uh, uh, we lived in the part of uh, Lebanon where uh, it's mixed, mm -hmm. different religions. And when I went to uh, college, mm. uh, it was in West Beirut, which is mixed Christians and Muslims and okay, all. Okay, okay. Um, so I had the chance uh, to first get educated mm -hmm. uh, uh, about other mm -hmm. religions, about okay. uh, other culture, other people, and second, uh, to be open-minded, mm -hmm. and third, to uh, try and learn be diplomatic, because oh. if uh, you offend somebody then, yeah. Yeah. you can you, you be shut. You shut down all diplomacy. You, you can yeah. be shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I always expressed my thought, and by then, growing in that civil war, which uh, was like 17 years, I mean, if they say 15, but uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's in fact 17 years, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I was against it. Uh, I didn't want, you know, any party. It's, it's against that war, because it wasn't helping the country, it wasn't helping anybody. Uh, but not many people, you know, supported that idea. But there were people who who were in that same uh, line. But with the others, I had to be diplomatic in expressing that. Okay, I'm not with you. I don't agree with you. But we're here to work together, for example, or study together, or be together. And especially, especially when I helped as a volunteer um, with the Red Cross. Oh, yeah. Then. You're uh, above all. Yeah. You're at the human level. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, you can say things, but still you, you take it um, in a way that, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you shouldn't be in one, on one side, not the other side, or offend that party or not that party. At a human level. Yes. That's, I could, we can do like 20 shows on at a human level. Uh, if we could all just break everything down, I don't care what, what, what box you're in, but just can we get on a human level? Uh, my heart beats, I need to breathe at a human level. Yes. That every, we all, and I always go this, okay, so this is just me. It's just no one's watching. It's just me on the show right now. No one's here. No one is even watching the show. It's just me and that camera right now. I always say, this, this, this is the, 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 the thread that brings us all together. On the holidays or holy days, holla, holla or holy, whatever, how you want to pronounce it, but on those special days on the weekend, whatever, Friday night, everyone wants to do the same thing. Put some, put some meat on the grill and drink something cold global that is a global need after a after a long hard week month year whatever that's what we all want to do put something on the grill drink something cold that's that's just human human nature and and and, and even going farther back something about sitting around a, a, a fire and sharing the stories Yes. And what what is the story of your life? <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> just a girl. <laughs> just a girl. Just a girl know, who know, yeah. was born in yeah. a tiny little uh, country mm -hmm. um, in yeah. Mount Lebanon, mm -hmm. a beautiful area, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very beautiful. Um, beautiful Mediterranean country. Mm -hmm. Very few people know it's, mm -hmm. it's on the Mediterranean. So wow. it's with Spain, Italy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
all the other Mediterranean countries, it's uh, where the abstract alphabet uh, that we use in English, French, and mm -hmm. other languages, mm -hmm. uh, not in Russian or Chinese, just our language, mm -hmm. uh, it was invented, the, the abstract. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was by the Phoenicians. Uh, few thousand years before Christ, BC. Mm -hmm. So it's already like 4,000 years ago or more. And uh, they uh, had to come up with it in order to facilitate the trading. They used to do trade. Yeah. They were the first sailors in the Mediterranean, went to other countries around that Mediterranean Sea and uh, sold items and also kind of educated these other countries um, about what they are selling and uh, how they are going to do the sale. And they ha there has to be something simple. The yeah. abstract language was said you take uh, alphabet and gather different characters to come up with a word. If you gather okay. diff in a different way, you come up with a different word. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. Right, yes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, it was there uh, a lot of history. Uh, it's where uh, the cedars are, as you know, mentioned so many times in the Bible, mm -hmm. cedars of Lebanon or yeah. cedars of God. Yeah. And uh, as I said, it's a democratic country of, it has both Muslims and Christians and uh, other minorities, other religions. Um, and um, unfortunately it went through war. Never, it never attacked other countries. Mm -hmm. Other bigger countries, and uh, this is my call, is projecting uh, a picture of the cedars. Oh, These are the cedars of Lebanon. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lebanon never attacked other countries. It went, and, and uh, did where, tr where trade, sales, and education. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two uh, areas, mainly uh, the largest area where you can find the oldest trees of cedars, thousands of years old. Um, and uh, one in north, um, uh, Lebanon called, uh, area called Pshari, it's where Pshari, Pshari, it's uh -huh. where uh, the author, very known author here in the U.S., Khalil Gibran, mm -hmm. was born. Mm -hmm. And Gibran wrote a book, a bestseller. Uh, some say that it's the um, second best sold after the Bible through the years. Uh, it's called The Prophet, and some people misinterpret it as I think it's Prophet for Prophet Muhammad, but no, it's, it's uh, like an idea about someone who is wise and shares his wisdom about mm -hmm. love, about marriage, about children. That's uh, you. <laughs> thank you, that's an honor. That's yeah. you. Grew up reading Gibran, Gibran. we call it Gibran in uh, Lebanese. Um, and he was um, kind of a mentor to me. And uh, uh, there are other pictures um, that you will we, see. We have a clip coming up. Uh, we're going to see if we can roll this clip. The clip about the wisdom of our city. I, I believe that's what we want to take a look at. Yes, uh, it's sure. A, it's an amazing clip for me uh, because I think it exposes everything that you are about. And you try to expose everything about others. And that's powerful to me. Thank you. And it's, it's mostly about others. It's yeah. Yeah. not much about me. Yeah. Uh, I help others express mm -hmm. what they would like to ex express. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's it, is bring the wisdom. Wisdom of? Our city. And I, I need to say something that yeah. I... Uh, uh, started the show on my own time. Mm. So I own the show. Mm. It's not like under TV Santa Barbara. Effort I'm grateful oh. to the team here, everyone mm. uh, for helping, and mm. Eric, our uh, executive yeah. director, yeah. Yeah. for supporting me, encouraging nice me guy. all the way. But, and I checked with him, there is no conflict of interest. Mm. I do this on my own time, mm. and I work in the afternoon at TVSB. Uh, so no interest, uh, no conflict of interest here, and I pay my membership like you do. <laughs> uh, so I'm grateful for supporters that help us pay our membership. So sure. thank you. Can we get that clip? We're just so grateful. Thank you for watching the show.
the wisdom your life story but the points we cover is what made your life awesome made you happy first thing <laughs> okay. you loved your husband his yeah. love to you so love and the second thing the community being here in Santa Barbara and being part of the women's club having all those friends and their love and um, also working out <laughs> since 47 okay when you go you to bed, you told me, you forget everything. That's one good thing I sleep. When I go to sleep, everything's gone. I mean, I, I don't agonize over things before I go to sleep. I don't know what hit my head to think that my driver's license was going to be up, so I went out to the DMV and I took my t I didn't study or anything. I just and I told the man uh, something about I didn't get a notice or something. He said, do you want to take the test? I said, well, I'm here. And I passed my test. <laughs> I didn't even study or anything. And I got my driver's license for five years. So, so when I'm close to 100, my driver's license will be, if I'm still here. <laughs> Beautiful children. Thank and you. Thank you. It's a blessing. It and grandchildren. And grandchildren. Yeah. Wow. So, can you tell us more about about hemophilia? What is it exactly? Hemophilia is uh, a genetic bleeding disorder that blood doesn't clot properly. It clots a little bit, but not enough. So, uh, cuts are not an issue. But internal bleeding, because of the, it just continues to slowly bleed, can cause a lot of damage to joints or it can cause death if you have a, a brain injury. Wow, and th that internal bleeding would start like that? It can, it can start spontaneously, yeah. yeah. And so for you know, my whole life I've had to get um, blood plasma or re replacement therapy, what I was missing from other people. When I, went, when I started changing my life and I decided that I didn't want to escape in drugs, um, I started looking for solutions in my life. And those people were always in the background as quiet cheerleaders. I took a risk and um, not a risk I would ever take again. I never thought I was going to have kids actually. And uh, it, it just, uh, I think a person doesn't know until they're in the situation exactly what they will do or what risk they may or may not take. But uh, she knew and, uh, and we were very lucky and everything turned out okay. They're healthy. Very healthy. Children and grandchildren. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah. They're, they'll be 29 uh, in September. The yeah. twin. The twins. Daughters. The twin daughters. That you have. Yeah. And they've... Um, They've, uh, they've given me a, um, seven grandchildren. Wow, and amazing. One more is on the way. One, another one will be born in September. So. So, All right. uh, if I would have killed myself or if I would have taken a different route in my life where I wasn't as focused on positive things, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to see the results of the effort that I've put, that the positive effort that I've put towards other people and myself. So if you go back in time and talk to that 19 year old boy who was about to commit suicide, what would you tell him? I would tell him, don't do it at all uh, because there's a future that you don't know about. There's a future that you can't imagine and that there's people that need you. There's people that you'll comfort as they make a transition to leave this earth. And you, you don't want to miss that because 
it, it's, it's, um, it's an experience that feeds the soul. And, and the silver lining really is that you will, I would tell my 19 year old self that you've got a job to do, you're gonna be a father and grandfather, so there's people that, that, that will need you and, uh, and then and you'll be rewarded with um, some great experiences, so. Santa Barbara, the ocean is in front of us, and we have a special guest, Pastor Chuck Reed Sr. Welcome. Well, thank you for having us on the show. We appreciate it. Oh. Uh, uh, how about family? Have you got any children? Yes, yes, yes. We've got a um, beautiful daughter. She's um, she's 40, drives us nuts. Um, she's a teacher. She's got a beautiful grandson. Uh, married for almost uh, 15 years now. Elijah is 11 years old now. Um, great young lady. She's uh, teaching in the Oxnard area. And then we have a son, Charles Jr., um, who's now uh, resting in heaven. Uh, he passed away almost 10 years ago from uh, leukemia. Uh, and it was very, it, uh, it, 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 it enhanced me. Um, it, it was a difficult time, but a glorious time. Oh, did this happen after you moved uh, to Santa Barbara? Two weeks after we moved in town, pastoring a new church, we were, you know, he was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, how long uh, did he, he survive? He battled it for five years, and then uh, he was able, he was going through the aggressive, aggressive chemo and aggressive uh, therapy for about two years. Um, the doctors had kind of given up on him. They said there's nothing else he could do. Uh, they sent him home uh, to stay with us. We thought he was it's all the time he had left. Uh, and he started eating his mom's sausages and biscuits oh. and scrambled eggs every morning. And he picked up some weight. He was able to return back to work. Uh, he survived for two years. And one day he got a bad cold. And shortly thereafter, his lungs were uh, compromised. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he died. He passed away from it. Um, two things he told, three things he told me. He says, uh, he said, Dad, I need you to take care of Mom. Um, finish school and get that red Corvette. <laughs> we got to be who and where we are in life and I think it's so important for us to share our story share our testimony one thing I, I tell the congregation is tell your story and give God the glory tell your story we tell all have a story, story to tell and give God your glory. the glory yes 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 I love that <laughs> the age of 21 but it was a whole new world television was new yes none of those moments are on film they're not preserved you just have to take my word for it you mentioned sometimes you had to improvise or do your own twists yes to give a new music well what happened was I became the I didn't realize it till after I was told I was the youngest musical director of a television station in the United States. Uh, I wasn't paid for the extra title. 
However, one day when I arrived at work, they said, Gil, will you fill out these forms for the music licensing of the music that we used? And the forms were quite extensive, so I, I decided, you know what? Rather than fill out these forms, I'm going to create all the music that I use, particularly for the children's show. So I used to draw inspiration from the drawings that they made that day, and all the music that I played was original, so we wouldn't have to pay royalties. Yeah. Very inventive. So that gave me a, Very a chance to create. Creative. Create, yes. yes. And it's sad to say, all that music is lost to the ages. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure they enjoyed it so very much then. But it was valuable training for me. Yes. Valuable training. Yes. Uh, many years later, when I was, uh, I got a church a job as a church organist, uh, I also started improvising on all the hymns. Original work is sort of a, a milestone for me. Yes. Because I, I make up my arrangements when I perform. They're never the same way twice and I will vary the program during the audience, just depending on the mood of the audience. Uh, that's why music has always been fresh to me. Yeah. It's never the same way twice. Yeah, and you, you make it unique, you make it your own, your own. Much, Gil, for being with us. It's been a pleasure and an honor. And Thank you for the beautiful music over the years and now and for many, many more years to come. Well, thank you. And the best way that I can say it, of course, is uh, with a song in my heart, my theme song, to tell my audience thank you for everything with a song in my heart. And thank you for making these years wonderful and a lot of fun. I wish, I wish, I'm, I'm hoping that when I get to be, at least, at least next week, a little wiser than what I am today. Um, and I think that happens because I pay attention, or that we should pay attention, to the little lessons that we learn along the way. And if we don't learn the lessons for ourselves, look at others who have learned or who can ins inspire us to become bigger, better, greater, more, or at least to be conscious of what, what we're doing. Um, so I gotta ask you, the wisdom of our city, how'd you come up with that? Uh, th that's the thing is I learned, mm -hmm. I learned from friends and mentors mm -hmm. and um, so many uh, people around me um, and I thought this would help others. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, tips we share over this show hopefully will help shortcut other people's struggle mm -hmm. and connect with them. Mm -hmm. And to give you an example, uh, the second episode we had, and uh, this was a snapshot of the, yeah, yeah, the episodes yeah. we've done yeah. so far. Yeah. One of them is with you. Yeah. Um, the second one was with Ken Baxter, who is our star volunteer at TVSB. And uh, the reason I had the show with him, not because he's my friend and everything, I appreciate him, but because of what he's been through. And uh, the, the show is about surviving trauma mm -hmm. and surviving suicidal thoughts. And many people are about around us mm -hmm. would go through traumas mm -hmm. during their life wow. and suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. that connects with me personally mm -hmm. because uh, one of my three brothers, my brother, mm -hmm. committed suicide mm -hmm. because he was depressed and everything went to alcohol. Uh, he was uh, in his 50, I, mm -hmm. I think 53. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh yes, yes, and uh, he had three children, mm -hmm. and if he were still with us today, he would have seen his grandchildren, and this is what we 
connect what we relay through the show and can share this with us. If mm. he had committed suicide when he thought about it the first time when he was 19 years old, mm. he would have never seen his sure. twin daughters and grandchildren wow. today. And how many people he's helping yeah, today. He's yeah, volunteering with yeah. the hospice yeah. organization, with so many other um, charity organizations. Okay, so here. I need a bottom line number. Bottom line number. Just the, the number. Of I need, what? I need you to be exact. How many people have you helped right now? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to it's, tell. Yeah, I, know, I, right? I wish, I wish yeah, millions. I wish millions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's hard to tell. We don't collect statistics yeah. here at Santa Barbara, but at TV know, Santa Barbara. You know, yeah. you are, uh, and that that's the and that's amazing. That to me, that is the most amazing thing that, of what we do here, of the people that we touch, that sometimes we never know. Yes. Like, like hey, I see you out there. I love you. We want you to. Yes. And we we will never know yes. who we yes. inspire. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm I'm so grateful. So there there are people out there watching the show right now. I don't know them. I may never see them, but they may walk up to you on the street one day and say, "Hey, I saw the show. You were on it." Inspire them right now. Look into that camera and say, "Hey, young person, person struggling, uh, person dealing with." I'm a, I'm a female, I'm not educated, I'm working on my degree, I'm trying to get there. Uh, I, I'm not the producer uh, at, a, at a TV show or at a network, but I'm good enough to be me. What would you tell that young person, young lady watching the show? <laughs> Uh, first, I wouldn't tell them. <laughs> Don't come on, I'm, Chuck. I'm happy, <laughs> or I'm good enough being me. <laughs> that Ooh, that's the, first, the key. Good yeah. enough being me. Uh, but I wouldn't say it. Mm. I wouldn't say it. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. <laughs> I always try to be the best of that's what I can be. Uh, I do my best yeah. to be the best, yeah. but I'm not sure where I am and Maybe how people they right they <laughs> they. Yeah. would uh, decide whether uh, it's good being me uh, and if I'm inspiring them I'm or not. I'm writing that down. <laughs> but I wouldn't say I inspire you, I inspire others. No, they decide whether it's happening. And my only hope is that I'm touching their lives and helping them with their struggle mm -hmm or helping to empower them or make a decision. Like for example, uh, the latest episode we had with a pianist, Gil Rosas. Mm -hmm. uh, Say the name again. Gil Rosas. Mm -hmm. Gil mm -hmm. Rosas, mm -hmm. uh, he's very known in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. especially in El Paseo restaurant, the finale of La Fiesta. Oh, okay. He used to be the one to Yep. to uh, play the piano mm -hmm. at El Paseo restaurant for the finale. And um, he started at KEYT mm -hmm. when he was 16 years old. Yes, and he, he used to create music for them. Just come up with it. And many people don't know this about him. They see him, he's a professional pianist. We know him at the Santa Barbara Women's Club. We love him. Mm -hmm. But these details, nobody know. And I thought probably this would help young people trying to decide about a major to choose. So wh whatever it is, whether it's in the music industry, wherever it's painting, uh, it's arts, other areas. So we share tips how you can make something you love mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. make it profitable, mm -hmm. make it a career. That's amazing. So, so what is your, what is your uh, official title here at the station. What, what do they call you when you, you walk in? Uh, I'm because Eric <laughs> Eric is El Presidente. So when you walk in, you have to you have to bow down. You have to drop flowers in front of him and all that kind of stuff. But when you walk in, what is your official title at the station? Uh, it's a director of a digital media programming. Okay. So when you walk in, do yes. people throw flowers down? <laughs> <laughs> They may throw flowers because I'm helping them and they're hopefully happy with my service and I receive 
great feedback. I'm so, grateful. So, so give me grateful. the official title yes. again. I'm sorry. But, uh, it's been years, in fact, since I moved to California, that I no longer, you know, care much about titles. Yes, yes. When I, you know, uh, moved from Montreal to the U.S., mm -hmm. I left because I may get a better opportunity or uh, the, the headquarters was moved to Atlanta, so I was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then I, I noticed then that no, it's, it's not the title. When you are higher up uh, with the changes in organization, you may be hit, you know, the uh, first. Or you are the target. Yeah, <laughs> so I told them, I'm okay, whatever title you give me, I don't mind as long as the salary is <laughs> is they as big rain. as yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. highest yeah. titles. So that I, that's uh, what works. And I, not because, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's the money, it's what the money can provide. It's right. a better life, right. it's a happier right. life, and the ability to, to help my family and um, those who I can help. Yes, so we, are, we support many members of our families, you, both you my are, husband and myself. You are so powerful to me. That's, that's, <laughs> so so, so if, 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 if you have been watching the show today, you are watching, you are experiencing a love affair right now. Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I shut the TV when my husband is watching. <laughs> if you if if he does, if, if, if 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 your husband doesn't know and oh, if my he wife loves doesn't you. know, they will know yes. tonight. <laughs> and okay. My husband necessarily love you. That is the power you. of what we do here. It is a bond. It is a, a heart thing. It is a pouring of spirit. Yes. It is a, a connection yes. that we do here because what we yeah. do here is not just in a box. It's not just mm -hmm. in front of a camera, but we know that what the love that we experience here, the the wisdom, mm -hmm. the the com, uh, what's the big, com, camaraderie. That is a big word. I can't yes. see. I don't, it starts with a K. Let's <laughs> see. Camaraderie. It's, camaraderie. A, it's a big word. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. comes from French. That's yeah. why I know how to say it. <laughs> English is a third language, language so French, yeah. But it's my it, it, <laughs> what, what happens here, we, we share the heart and the love and the compassion for what we do. And the love and compassion for what we do here is sharing stories. Yes. We share our stories. And your story is a very powerful story. Thank you. And Thank so you. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And the journey that you have been on and the connection that we have in that journey, that's powerful to me. Thank you. I've been doing this thing, um, this series on divine appointments. And our appointment has been very divine. Yes. Because this is, this is the second time that our paths have crossed in front of the world, that the world watches us talk. And so I'm so grateful. So I'm, this is the second time you've been on the show. I'm looking, in fact, I'm going to say three times because you've been on my show twice. I've been on your show once. And so now we're looking for, I guess, sh show forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And again, I mean, I invited you to be on my yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Not because you're my very, very dear friend and I love you and everything, yeah. but because of the wisdom you mm. have yourself Mercy. and to share this yeah. and that episode was about mm. overcoming grief mm. and living with, mm. with grief and after the loss of your young son My glory. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's a powerful powerful show powerful I, was, I was trying to take some notes yeah, I don't have my glasses on when I read I mean, <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, good enough being me we were just chatting. We are yes. good enough. What, 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 what is what? I'm just stuck. What is that? Yes. Good enough being me. I'm, I'm. I think I'm good enough. I don't have to. I'm happy being me. Um, I. I don't think <laughs> I can stop at certain level or yeah. you know happy being me. Yeah. I um, try to always grow. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, this is why I took the job here. I, I was first volunteering at TVSB mm -hmm. doing the cameras because I love photography. So I said TV cameras are similar, but I learned a lot and mm -hmm. all the team were so helpful. Um, JP, um, Oscar, Mark, everybody, Michael, uh, Ken. So we're um, dropping names. So I want to put some first names <laughs> in the last name. JP. Montalvo. Uh, 
Mark Melson, Oscar Gutierrez, uh, Michael Nicholson, <laughs> Ken Baxter. We yeah. love you guys. Yeah, okay. Yes, we do. So uh, they taught me, they mm. mentored me. Mm. And then this progress for me to learn about the software, special software to do TV program, put the shows on TV. Mm. And to, for me, this is uh, this became easy because my background is in engineering, is in computer. Mm. But it's something new I learned and I grew. And then I started this new show. And th this is a growth experience. So um, I'm happy at this moment because I'm of service to my community. Mm. Yes. But it's not good enough for me. I'd love to always grow and be better and better and serve more and reach to more people to be able to, to help them some, somehow. Okay. So and this started when I started with the Red Cross, by the way. Mm. When, you know, I, I was probably then... 13, 14, years old. Wow. You, you're only 21, so <laughs> that was just a few, yeah, a few weeks years ago. back. Right, few. <laughs> Thank you. So let me ask you this. Okay, so you, you have a, a ministry of service. That's that's what I see. You ser you, you enjoy serving. You you can't help but help people. Yes. That so to me that's a ministry of service. Yes. You that's love my helping passion. people. Yeah. You just you see something, you help. You yes. Do. In the technical aspect, you're. You are, you're lots, so I'm not that good. I can't do all that. I'm, I'm like this. But yes. you know how to make sure and make sure all the wires cross. And, all that. and so that's your, 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 your given talent. And yes. I think we all have to make sure we stay in our talent zone. And you've been able to um, pull this thing together, and I'm so grateful for you being so wise enough to pull it together and be loving enough to say, and not only am I doing this for me, but how many other people that I can bring in? And you've, you've been so grateful to do yes, that for me. Yes. So I'm so grateful. Uh, my uh, teacher mm -hmm. on the speaking uh, business, Craig Valentine, who was a world champion of public mm -hmm. speaking with Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being world champion, you win um, um, a trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in 1999. But he says, he says, every time I reach out my hand to help someone, someone put a trophy in it mm. and i love this put a trophy in my hand girl <laughs> thank you so much you, you you're watching you're watching rejoice with pastor chuck and we're so grateful that you've been watching uh, we could not do this uh, without the the highly um professional staff here at tvsb uh, the beautiful city of santa barbara uh, channel 17 uh, if you ever want to experience joy and expertise at, at a highly professional level, stop by um, the TVSB station and, and fellowship with some of the employees here. Uh, we're so grateful that you've been watching the show and we're looking forward to you tuning in and staying focused. Thank you for being on the show. You're so great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.